Society has a fascination with celebrities. People want to eat like them, work out like them, sleep like them, even breathe like them. Going along with this, many people also want to read like them, including me. So I decided to pick three celebrities and three books they have read to see if I too like the same books celebrities like. I have three celebrities' names written down on three pieces of paper. And I have this stocking, which I'm going to put the names into. My hand has gotten stuck. And I'm gonna shake this around. And then whatever celebrity's name I pull out first is going to be the first celebrity that we're going to talk about. So let's just shake this around. It's 333. I want to talk about him first. So I don't know why my uh, phone never wants to focus, but if you can see that says, if you will see that's what it looks like. Let's talk about Timothy Chalamet and his book recommendations. I heavily researched this. I looked at newspaper articles. I looked at YouTube videos. I just scoured the internet for his book recommendations. One of the books he recommended was Little Women. Did you read Little Women? Of course, yeah. And what did you think? The first it's inc I mean, it's incredible. And Which I have already read. I actually do have a confession though. When I was 15, I watched the Little Women adaptation of him in it and I did fall in love. He also recommended 1984. The book that's coming to mind right now is 1984. A book which I have literally read over 20 times because I had to study this book when I was in school and I really liked it. So I've already read both of these and these were the ones that he specifically named. But if you look up what books does Timothy Chalamet recommend, the one book that kept popping up time and time again was Crime and Punishment, which is the book that I decided to read. I tried to find specifics of where he said this book, but he basically just said exposed a lot of great Dostoevsky growing up and I think it is pretty safe to say that if someone reads Russian literature, they have 100% read Crime and Punishment. One of my favorite pastimes was watching tennis while I read. Also, look at this nice purple room. Yeah, well, my PowerPoint thing is broken, meaning I can never have these LED lights ever again. Also, I don't know if this is just me, but I feel like if Crime and Punishment was to be ever made into another movie, I 100% think that Timothy Chalamet should play Raskolnikov, and I think he'd do a very good job at it. Why I think of this is because I did see... <laughs> I saw an edit, okay? I saw this edit of him. The editor had made it kind of like all dark and gloomy and everything. It technically was like a Harry Potter edit, but I was like, you know what? I feel like this is giving crime and punishment vibes. Wait, let me show it to you. The music is 100% better. Okay, I'll play you a little teensy bit of the music just because, you know, I don't want my entire video to be taken down because I played like 10 seconds of a song. I started properly reading this book in July last year, so it's taking me seven months to finish this book. I'm reading Crime and Punishment at the moment. Now, Crime and Punishment is a book about this dude who lives in poverty, and he believes that extraordinary people have the right to uh, murder. You know how they talk about banned books in libraries? This is one of them. He really wants to kill someone because of the psychological disturbance and themes of murder and political and religious stuff. All right, I'm done with this. I'm going to watch The Breakfast Club now. I mean, in my opinion, this book is not a bingeable book. I just don't think that you can just sit down and read this in one sitting. And I think if someone says that they have read this book in one sitting, they were 100% either not reading the book properly or just skimming it because I don't see how that's actually possible. And like, how long were you sitting in one sitting for? You know what I'm saying? When I, my lights turned off. Look at how badly my back is peeling, ew. I started reading this book when I was very, very lonely. Like, I think July was one of the most loneliest months. In fact, I think it was just the loneliest time I'd ever been in my entire life, June, July, August. So when I read this book, it wasn't really the best time for me to read it because Raskolnikov at the start. Also, did I even explain what this book is about? Basically, I apologize. Raskolnikov is this ex-law student. He is heavily pondering morality. In his mind, he rationalizes killing this woman and then the woman's sister. Now, in his mind, his first murder was completely justified because this woman was like a scammer and nobody liked her. He was just like, I'm doing society a service. He's just kind of like going through his life afterwards. And then this girl, she's really sweet. Do not let the dark romance girlies need this because they'll start being like, oh, Raskolnikov, the love of my life. They will say that. And you, you can't even lie. They would. Anyways, she does not believe in murder, unlike Raskolnikov. 
I'm not going to tell you what happens at the end. You can read it to find out. There were so many parts of this book that I just had to pause for a second and really think about what exactly I was reading. I also really thoroughly enjoyed it. Yes, it did take me seven months to read, but I still did enjoy it. The original is in Russian and I cannot read Russian. So I got this version of it. This version makes it very easy to read. I'll read you the first sentence. Chapter 1. At the beginning of July, during a spell of exceptionally hot weather, towards evening, a young man came down onto the street from the little room he rented from some tenants in S Lane. He had succeeded in avoiding an encounter with his landlady on the stairs. His room was situated right under the roof of a tall, five-story tenement. You see what I'm talking about? It's not like when you're reading it and you're like, what on earth am I reading? I don't understand a single thing of what's going on here. But also, I wouldn't say this is the easiest classic to read. I think if you want an easy classic to read, definitely don't go immediately into it. I mean, you could. But I'm just saying, I, I don't know if that's... This book is so interesting. I would say there's so many dramatic elements. It really does just make you wonder. I will admit, sometimes when I'm walking now, I will see someone walking by themselves and I'll be like, hmm, I wonder what they're thinking about. I wonder if they're thinking what Ritz Kornikov was thinking. I like this book so much that this is one of those books that I would just be not reading one star reviews of. Sometimes I will read the reviews of books, but sometimes if I really love a book, I just won't because I don't want to hear other people's negative thoughts and opinions on something that they just didn't like. And a lot of the times, I think some one-star reviewers, they do not give actual proper reasons. Like if I give a book one star, which I have many times, I explain why it is one star. But so many people just give a book one star and it's like, hmm, it was this. This book is also very unhinged. The characters in this book, they're unhinged. Roskolnikov is unhinged. Just, things are just so unhinged and it's just like, oh. Oh, as I was looking for a Pinterest aesthetic of this book, because sometimes I like looking at Pinterest aesthetics, I found this, <laughs> I found this picture from Wallace and Gromit and I just, I just love it. I am just so glad that I read this book. I'm so glad I read it in my lifetime. And to be honest, I think I will 100% be reading this book again. It also made me a little bit sad to finish reading this book. I know it sounds ridiculous, but sometimes I get attached to books and then I try to stretch out the process of reading it because I don't want it to end. I have to admit, I don't actually know what song correlates with this book. I will look at playlists for books that I'm reading or I will be reading and I'll think this is such this kind of song. But I, oh, I know. Oh, I know what song. I was just about to say, I don't know what song matches this book. I 100% know what song matches this book. Let me get it up, okay? <laughs> this is what's calling hop, okay? So yeah, I, okay, that's the song for this book. Overall, I would say Timothy Chalamet, very good taste in a book because I like this book. I think it was a very good book. I really, really loved it. I really did. Okay, good work, Timothy. Moving on. Does someone want to tell me what kind of bug that is? We have two more celebrities left in here. I wonder which one we're going to get next. Let's just flip things around. What does that say? Daisy Edgar Jones. Again, with the not focusing. Please just focus. I'm gonna have to take a picture of this. I will insert the picture here of what the little piece of paper says. So, Daisy. Now, the book that I am choosing to read for her is none other than Normal People. Also, this book is about Marianne and Connell and their navigations through high school and college and each other and friendships and relationships and growing as a person that's what this book is about i went on vacation and one of my most notable reads was normal people i read it quite a lot i read it on beach it's very nice it has lots of sands in it i also read it on new year's so we are going back in time actually because yeah look at the fireworks i have a lot of opinions about fireworks i think a lot of money gets put into it when that money could be going elsewhere and also animals don't like fireworks and I think a lot of animals get very scared on New Year's Eve, but we're not here to talk about that, are we? No, we're here to talk about normal people. So yeah, I read it on New Year's Eve. From my house, uh, you can see some nine o'clock fireworks that people do, I don't know. And obviously there's the like proper 12 o'clock fireworks. That I remember when I was younger, it was such like a special treat to stay up at night and be able to watch the fireworks. I guess this is some special Clash of Clans event that will no longer be around. 
I also watched Zootopia. This is just kind of like a tradition because when I was younger, I watched Zootopia on New Year's one time and then I watched Prince and the Frog because I like it and then I don't know why I'm showing you Clash of Clans again. On New Year's, you know, I did the cheese thing. Also in my room, I now have this clothes stand thing because I had too many clothes so they would just be all piling on the floor. For full transparency, I'm not actually reading normal people here, but I forgot to put this in a different reading vlog. I currently have the smallest amount left of this book. I don't want to finish it and I know what happens because I've watched the show but still okay okay I'm gonna just read it I'm gonna I'll, I'll read it with you guys so I don't feel so alone yeah so as you can see this is me just reading I personally really like normal people this is me reading the end I thought it would be fun if I got my reaction down on camera and yeah so I <laughs> oh my why am I crying I was actually crying for that also if you're wondering why this book is batted up and it looks like it has been used it's because it is used and I love buying used books. There's something about them that just makes me think, you know what, someone else has read this book and now I'm reading it. And I also think that it saves money. Also, this is why you should buy used books. The latest edition of this book, it has this like hideous sticker on the front of it. Well, guess what? Because this was used, it doesn't have a sticker on it. See? See? So if you don't like stickers on a book, get it used before it has a sticker. Okay. Now, the thing about normal people, right, is I swear, like 2020, Celebrities were raving about this book, like constantly, constantly raving about it. But then when I tried to find evidence of these celebrities saying that they loved it, I couldn't find a single thing. Everything that came up was the TV show. So now I'm thinking that maybe people were raving about the TV show, not the book. But like, I swear celebrities were reading this book left and right. And I just can't find any evidence of it. I was just like, huh? Thankfully though, Daisy Edgar Jones, I have information that she likes this book okay the first article i found was called the new yorker and this is actually the only free article that i got to read because that's what they told me that i'm gonna have to pay so i'll put the little article there before auditioning for the show she hadn't read normal people but then she said i read it in a day i love it so much i've always loved romances she thinks that both of the characters are incredibly complex and flawed connell and marion they are flawed they're not like perfect people i mean no one is and i love this book but a lot of people don't love it okay Another website that I found, I'll again put the thing there. Daisy said that when she read the book for herself, she fell ridiculously in love with it. So much so that she vividly pictured herself as Marianne while reading. Then when I read the book, I was reading it thinking I was Marianne, which was even more intense. She also said that she read the book five times before shooting and about 10 times after. So I think if you read a book 15 times, I think it's safe to say that you like it. So yes, because of Daisy, that we have normal people. I have seen the show. I actually watched the show first. And as soon as I watched the show, I immediately was like, I need to buy this book and I need to read it immediately. And the thing about the show is that it was just so raw. It was just so real. It was just so intimate. I have tried to ask around all of my friends, people in my life, and I'm like, have you seen normal people? Have you read the book? And no one has. So I can only really talk about it here because no one else I know has seen or read it. From what I can remember, the show does a really good job with this book because when I was reading this book I was watching the show like hmm they do change a few things like there was the guy with Marianne in Sweden I started re-watching Normal People and I had to stop oh this is the part I, had to, I paused on it's when they're at the beach it's the part I was at oh you can see me in the reflection see I just I just I decided that I valued my own happiness I saw this edit. I saw this edit and I'm going to put it here because I think if you have watched the show and you've read the book, I feel like this edit, I feel like this is exactly what kind of song goes with them. I don't know why I keep showing you edits. Let me just say that this book has really beautiful, beautiful quotes. And I'm going to read out a few of them for you if you don't want to hear any of the quotes because you want to read this blind, then I recommend that you skipped forward. Is this, the, is this the right page? I just write down page numbers and I don't say anything else about what the quote could be. I'm not a religious person, but I do sometimes think God made you for me. I'm just looking at this page and there's actually another quote here that <laughs> this uh, does definitely describe certain people in my life. Okay, sometimes in the middle of the day, she remembers something, a character's name, I'm just gonna like leave it blank has said or done to her and all her energy leaves her completely so her body feels like a carcass something immensely heavy and awful that she has to carry around 
I feel like that quote is just, it's a very relatable quote. There's also another thing here. This quote here describes so much of how I live pretty much every single day in my life or anytime something nice happens. It's like feeling a strange sense of nostalgia for a moment that was already in the process of happening. The amount of times I'm with people or I'm doing something and in the moment I genuinely feel this sort of sense of despair and longing about a situation that I'm currently in. Like it's the future and I'm looking back at the moment. That's how I feel in the actual moment that is happening. The nostalgia. And it's just, it's so strange because surely you shouldn't think that because you're experiencing it, but I just, I always do. And I just, this book verbalized it. It's very strange. And then I can't really enjoy the moment because I'm already feeling nostalgic for it. And I don't know why that happens. And I wish it would stop. I would like to say that not everyone likes this book. Not everyone gets this book either. Good thing I like it and good thing that I get it. The characters and the situations and just everything that was going on. A major criticism that this book gets is the way that it jumps around. So the plot is not linear. It goes from past to present to three months later, this, that, and it doesn't really have like chapters. It just more so has things like six months later or like three days later or stuff like that. Five minutes later. <laughs> At first I found that a little bit annoying, I will admit, but I got over that pretty quickly. A lot of people also hate the fact that there is no quotation marks in this book, but I would say it's very easy to get used to. It's not like you're confused about who's talking which not because it's, it's very obvious. Someone said that she read the entire first page and the first chapter and then she didn't know that there was no quotation marks. She just thought that it was in a monologue. I don't really know how that's possible. The fifth line, it says, oh, hey, he says. And then the next line is, come on in. That is very clearly a conversation. Who, who is having conversations like that in their heads? Who is saying, oh, hey, come in to themselves? You know, it's, it's very clear to see that it's, I think that sometimes people skim over the words. So I think if you're actually reading the book, it's it's very obvious to see when a character is talking, like I'm just gonna open to a random page. And look, this is immediately, you can tell that he's talking because it says this, you could have a different boyfriend, you know, he says, I mean, guys are constantly falling in love with you from what I hear. Obviously, that's someone talking because it literally says, he says, it's just, <laughs> I don't think that we always need to have little quotation marks. Yes, quotation marks make it easier, but also this is like one book, you know what I'm saying? So it was really not that big of a deal. I also liked Marianne and Connell's relationship. I felt it was very, very real. And I liked how it didn't follow the same old, same old sequence. I liked that the ending wasn't so typical of every like romance book. I would even say that this book is so much more than romance, but I liked that their relationship was real and it dealt with real things and it wasn't just like, oh, let's be in fairyland. If you want to read a book like that, then I think don't read this then. Brief intermission. This is one of those books that I will definitely be rereading again. I've heard that Sally Rooney's other books are similar to this one and I think that's a wonderful for me because I like this book so at some stage once I have read majority of the books that are on my to be read pile then I will definitely be getting some of the other ones. Something in this book with Marianne and Connell it's like it's not like this with other people. I want my it's not like this with other people person. And I'm really scared. Like, I'm really, really scared that I've already met this person. There is someone, there's someone who I think could be my it's not like this other people, which I've not spoken to them since I was like 16. So if I really hope it's not that person. So I just need to find my it's not like this other people person. <laughs> again, again, a new person. And then the last note that I have about this book is to all the people who think Marianne and Connell are toxic, I'd hate, <laughs> I'd hate to see what they think about my love life. Did I even say what this book is about? I still have one more celebrity left, so let's just see. <laughs> oh, I wonder who it's gonna be. That says Hailey Bieber. A while ago now, I saw a picture of Hailey Bieber and she had the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo book with her. The first time I saw that picture, I was immediately inspired to make this video in the first place. So I thought, you know what? Let's read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It appears that I watched Aquaman on one of the same days that I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I decided to read outside. And if you look at the ground, see all those sparkles? That is from my really sparkly dress. I told you, it gets everywhere. I sat here weeks and weeks and weeks ago, right? There's been rain, there's been hail, there's been storms. And yet the sparkles are still on the ground. It's indestructible. So yes, I decided to read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It was a dark and stormy, well it wasn't stormy, but it was a dark night. And yeah, this is me just reading, flipping the pages a little bit. 
No, no, I don't want to keep reading anymore. Oh no, I don't like this. I don't like it at all. Every so often I would record my reactions because I just thought, I don't know, I, I just thought that sometimes when something would be emotionally moving, I would record my reaction to it. I don't really know why, it's just something I've seen people do, so I thought I would do it. Also, yeah, that lamp in the back, that's my reading lamp. I've literally had that since I was like six, I think. So that has lasted a very long time. Like I'm 18 now, I'm almost 19, but that lamp has lasted a long time. It's seen me go through quite a lot. I'm getting sad thinking about a lamp. And it will be the tragedy of my life that I cannot love you enough to make you mine. <laughs> I'm at a loss. I just, I don't know. Oh, this is a mess. This is, it's just a mess. It's a mess. Why? I'm going to film my reaction because I have a theory about something. A theory that ties in Monique to Evelyn. I was right. I also want to make it very clear that I'm not smiling because it's a smiling manner. I just smile when I'm uncomfortable. Again, was me filming my reactions. She's at the train station and it's reminding me of this movie. It's called Sliding Doors. I just watched it. It was a very life-changing movie. I'm gonna watch it again. My eyes are hurting. That is the current time, but I'm finishing this. I suppose it's fun doing this seeing my eyes move and everything. That's a really weird statement to make. Never did I think I'd ever make a statement like that. I'm getting to the end. No, I don't want to read it. I don't want to read it. I don't want to read the end. I don't want to read the end because I know what's gonna happen. Here it is here. And if you're wondering why, again, this book looks battered up in the corners, I did not do that, okay? This book is used again it was cheaper so i was just like it's a used book you know what i'm saying like it's still the same thing it's still the exact same words it's just someone else has had it before me that's why it's very yellowed as well which i don't even mind either because i like when books look like they're old and they look like they've been read speaking of Hayley Bieber, i <laughs> am thinking about justin bieber and something really strange has been happening on my instagram with justin bieber so i don't follow justin bieber i don't think i've ever followed him i think maybe one time in my life. I don't know. The point is, is that I, on my explore page, I kept getting recommended pictures of Selena and Justin from like years ago. Pictures that he still has up. And it wasn't just a me thing. So many of his old pictures, it was happening to other people as well because I would look at, it'd be like 30 seconds ago or two minutes ago on these posts that were so, so old, which I just thought was so strange because like, why exactly was that happening? And it was only those pictures. Oh, there's also a picture of Madison Beer. I don't know why exactly that was happening. Anyways, I feel like at this point everyone has read this book and I think most people who haven't read it they're not going to read it. This book was very very popular on BookTok like it was one of the main BookTok books that were recommended. Essentially this book is about this lady called Evelyn Hugo and this girl called Monique interviews Evelyn to do this sort of like tell-all memoir. Also yes a lot of the uh, pages have been dog-eared. I did not do that either. The person before me this also the person for me ate while reading this book because there were crumbs in it but you know it's fine it's fine so basically how this book is formatted is it's in present day with Monique and Evelyn interviewing but then it has parts of her memoir see for example this and then it goes into like pages and it's like Evelyn is telling the story so it's not just all interviews I like when books have sort of different ways to tell the story and in the present day she's kind of a bit of a recluse like she doesn't do interviews she doesn't do anything anymore and have you guys seen Sing to, there's uh, that guy who's a recluse, and I don't know, even though she's not because she literally lives in like the heart of the city, whatever, I think she does. I can't really remember, to be honest. She does, <laughs> I don't know why I kept thinking of that guy from Sing to. You know the guy I'm talking about, and then he goes on stage and then he sees his dead wife, like as a ghost form. Okay, but they're not similar at all. But I love when celebrities are reclusive in medias, like in books and movies and stuff. I just think it's because why? Also, in this book, in addition to the fact that it's just present day and also her memoirs, there's also news article clippings and something that, see, for example, this. This isn't a spoiler, this is literally on like the first page. So news article clippings. One thing that I really liked about it is that through the years, the news articles change because, you know, the, what was a big popular news article in one year is not going to be in, you know, a few years later. So I thought that was a really nice touch. I really did like that. In this book, Monique's main character, this author, the way she wrote Monique was that Monique was always assuming things when she was just wrong. 
Evelyn would say something and Monique would be like, so do you mean this? You mean this, right? Oh, you mean this? And Evelyn would have to be like, um, no, that's not literally because I wrote it down here. Evelyn had to pull her out like so many times and I was getting like secondhand embarrassment. See, Evelyn has to say, I need to know that you will listen to exactly what I'm trying to tell you and not place your own assumptions into my story. But all Monique does is just place so many assumptions. And I'm just like, why are you doing that? It just feels weird. A lot of their dialogue, it just felt so unnatural. At first, I was very apprehensive about this book because the dialogue was very unnatural and I just felt like the way that the author wrote Monique was very strange because I just didn't know why she was making Monique so... She didn't listen. But I found myself actually enjoying this book for the most part. I get why this book was so popular. Also, back to Monique's character. She knows that she's like this. There is literally a point where she admits it. So she's self-aware. She just chooses to not care. I will find the proof for you because I feel like sometimes people just say things about books and they don't actually have any evidence of it, but I do. See, look, this is the secondhand embarrassment. This is what Evelyn says to her. Haven't you been listening to a single thing I've told you? Like, that is so embarrassing. This is also page 123 and this is like a very important conversation. She literally says, I know how hard it is for people to assume things about you. And here I've gone and done to Evelyn. Why do I always call it Evelyn? And here I've gone and done to Evelyn what so many people have done to me. This is what I have written down in my notes. Monique is still annoying me because she doesn't listen at all. All she does is assume incorrectly because she doesn't listen. Monique knows this. Like, she's self-aware. She keeps acknowledging how she's messed up and apologizes for continuously assuming and jumping ahead, but does nothing to change it. Why did the author make her like this? Did you hear that? Um, anyways, so there are definitely some points in this book that were very sad. Like, there are certain parts and it's just like, oh, God. there was pain. I also love reading books at the same time as I'm reading other books. Like I right now cannot be someone who just reads one book at a time. I just find it very difficult. But I did read this book kind of a lot more than the others until I was nearing the end. I don't know, I can be really liking something and then when I get near the end, I just stop because I don't want it to be over. And yes, I know that rereading and rewatching things can be a thing, which I do often, but sometimes I do get nervous because I think about how many other things in the world that I'm missing out on because I'm just rereading the things I know. That got kind of deep for a second. This entire time, there's this kind of mystery element to this book. It's not really mystery, but it's like, why did Evelyn want Monique to be the one to do her memoir kind of thing? Because Monique is not very at the top in her company that she works at. And then Evelyn, I am sick of my... And Evelyn was constantly saying these weird cryptic stuff like, oh, soon you'll find out the truth. And then when you do, you'll hate me and everything. So it's like, why is that the case? There's a specific part at the end where I was like, hang on a second. Hang on a second. I think I've got this. And... I did get it, but I did not put the pieces together until near the end of the book. I liked there was a little bit of a twist, but at the start in my notes, I thought that Monique was silly as kid. I'm just gonna, that's not, that's not it. I was also so invested in Evelyn's life story. I preferred Evelyn's life story over the other stuff. It was just so intriguing. I don't know who Ruben is, but I've just written Ruben, ill. That's how I have it written. I also have, again, page numbers written down. Wait, what, what is this? I don't know what exactly is on this page. I don't know if it's exactly a spoiler, but I'll kind of like modify this quote a little bit. I wasn't heartbroken. I simply felt like my relationship had failed. And those are two very different things. I think I wrote that down because I want myself to remember that. And then also page 300, I've written, I'm screaming. And I don't know exactly why I wrote that down. Wait. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I see why. Page 300. I see why. Line 14. Yeah, that, that line really did get to me. In this book, there's a whole bunch of different characters. There is one character, and her name is Celia. This is what I kind of imagine Celia to look like a little bit. Lady with red hair. She's called Brenda, and she's from this movie called Crooked House, which is an Agatha Christie movie. I did enjoy those movies. Also, this book made me want Pop-Tarts, and I've never had a Pop-Tart. Chocolate ones, or the strawberry ones, I don't care. They, just, they look good. This book feels very... The way that movies are described and people are described, I was looking these people up and I was looking up the movies to see if they were real and they weren't, obviously, but I was just like, is it? Page 346. Oh, yes. No, this is, this is, mind. this is just something for me. But that's not who we are. That's not who we ever have ever been or ever could be. Sometimes I think about like what I actually want to do with my life and part of me is like, it's just not that realistic. My careers advisor in school did not like me at all. You know, and I don't want to, you know, get to how old I am and then start regretting the fact that I just took like, sort of like expected path for me to take whatever. That line just, I need to remember that line. 
Evelyn, she was very inspiring. Like the way she just took control of things. A strong part of me is like, I should like start listening to some of her lessons and stuff. That is it. That is all I have for you today. I am going to go now. Thank you for being here with me and everything. Um, <laughs> This next part that I'm gonna talk about is a spoiler. So if you have read this book, you can say if you have not read this book and you don't want to be spoiled just in case you do read this book. Well, I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Celia and Evelyn, they're true loves, right? They've been so impactful in each other's lives. This newspaper article, the last line, so Celia St. James, her former co-star, Evelyn Hugo, the former co-star, all they think is that Evelyn is and Celia were just former co-stars and that's it. 